Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to talk a little bit about something called B-roll. Now, B-roll might be a name that you've never heard before. So right about now, you might be thinking to yourself, B-roll? What's that? Don't worry, I guarantee you, you have seen B-roll before. You just didn't know what it was called. Here, let's take a look at this clip. So what is B-roll? B-roll footage is the secondary shots used that do not show the main subject. For instance, the A-roll is the primary video subject, which is often a person being interviewed. And the shots that you see that go away from the interviewed person is the B-roll. Here's a quick live demonstration. Right now, this is what you consider the A-roll because you're watching me talk and I'm the main subject. But now let's, transi let's transition to some B-roll. See these random shots that cover me up but you can still hear me? Well, this is B-roll. And usually they correspond with what the interviewer is saying, but these are just kind of random to show you what B-roll is. So, now why is B-roll so important? If there was no B-roll, a video can easily become very boring. For example, if I film a business owner talking about his product for, for a straight five minutes without any B-roll, we, we would have to stare at this guy for a long while while he talks and it would be kind of boring. Visually, it's not compelling or engaging, and if you want to make money with your marketing videos, you have to make sure that you aren't boring people to tears. Alright, now that you know what B-roll is, let's take a look at some B-roll in action. Here's a clip that I put together. Notice how the B-roll reinforces what the speaker is saying. I think hands down, one of my favorite places in the school is the library. Ms. Tomlinson's always there to help if you need it. There are great collaboration spaces, and of course lots of books and computers for kids who need access to information. It's also a great space to just kind of hang out and relax. The space in general is just really nice, and I think we're very lucky to have it. Okay, so now that you know what B-roll is, and you've seen some in action, we're going to take a look at some tips so that you can get the most out of shooting your B-roll. Here we go. Tip number one. Always, always, always shoot your video in landscape, not portrait, landscape. Okay, so whenever you're recording something, you've got two options. If you're recording with your phone, which is what we usually do, you can record this way in portrait, or you can record this way in landscape. Landscape is what you want to do. Here's why. Let's say you and a friend happen to be in the middle of Kinnick Stadium and come across the following scene. The Hawkeye football team is walking towards you. You both decide you want to record it. Your friend on the left takes out their phone and starts recording in portrait while you take yours out and start recording in landscape. They both fill up the screen and that's all well and good. That is until you have to actually watch them back on the television and while your friends on the left looks like that, yours actually fills up the screen. Moral of the story, always, always, always record in landscape. All right, our next step is something hugely important. It's called the rule of thirds. Again, you've probably never heard of this, but trust me, you've seen it. Check out this video, which does a pretty good job of explaining exactly what it is. The rule of thirds is really cool. Once you learn what it is, you begin to see it everywhere. Films, television, design, photography, anyone creating compositions usually keeps this rule in mind. Basically what the rule states is that you should divide your composition into nine equal parts, almost like a tic-tac-toe grid. You should align your point of interest on one of the lines or where the lines intersect. It creates a stronger composition and more visual interest within the frame rather than just centering everything. Let's take a look at just a few, at just a few examples. Do you see the pattern? You see this all the time put to use in headshots in a documentary or on the news. Landscape photographers make full use of the rule. By following this simple rule, you can take an otherwise boring scene and make it visually interesting. Okay, now that you know what the rule of thirds is, let's take a look at the rule of thirds in action in this trailer from the Black Panther movie that's coming out. Notice how their eyes are often put on the top third and notice how the subject is often put near or on one of the side thirds. And now an exclusive look at Marvel Studios' Black Panther. My king, we are home. My son, it is your time. I am ready. A war is coming. 
The Black Panther fights for us. And I will be there beside him as we lie. That is quite the entourage. Show them who we are. Step into the spotlight. Step into the spotlight. I hope you're ready, bro. I'm just getting started. Guns. So primitive. Let's have some fun. Now that we have your attention. Black Panther, rated PG-13, February 16th. All right, so that's your rule of thirds. Make sure you're keeping it in mind as you're filming to take your compositions from average to something that people will really remember. Many phone cameras even have grids like the one here that you can activate to help you shoot in rule of thirds. So, good luck. All right, our next tip, keep it stable. A lot of times when we're filming, and especially when we're doing so with our phones, there's a tendency for our hands to move, and this can create some seriously shaky and distracting video. Take a look at this video, shot without anything to stabilize the phone. Now take a look at this one, the same shot, but the camera was placed on top of an object to stabilize it. You won't always have a tripod with you, but luckily, almost anything can be used as a tripod. You can use a desk, you can use a table, you can use a wall. Just set the phone or camera on something to stabilize it. Your viewers will thank you. Because trust me, no matter how careful you think you're being, your phone is going to shake. and It's going to create a disjointedness and a jarring experience for your viewers, even if they only notice it on a subconscious level. Keep it stable and you'll keep it smooth. All right, that brings us to tip number four. Go high and get low. One of the best things about creating B-roll for an audience is that you have the opportunity to take them somewhere they've never been before. You can do perspectives and points of view that they don't get to see normally in their everyday life. This keeps your video interesting and compelling. So you'll want to make sure you take full advantage of this when you're out filming. Take a look at this next clip. Notice how the point of view goes super high, giving the audience a perspective they don't normally get to see in their everyday life. It keeps it interesting. Now take a look at this clip. Notice how the point of view goes very low. By using these high and low point of view shots, you take the audience to places they've never been before, which keeps your composition visually interesting and keeps them interested in your presentation. So make sure you work in some of these shots. Okay, our final tip, tip five. Use angles to convey meaning. Where you place your camera in relation to a subject conveys subconscious information about that subject to your viewer. This is a low angle. You'll notice the camera has been placed below the subject. Placing the camera here conveys that the subject is strong, powerful, dominant. So use accordingly when this is what you want to convey about your subject. Here we have a neutral angle. The camera has been placed at eye level. This is considered a formal and objective placement for the camera. It's likely the angle you'll use most when filming a subject. And it's definitely the angle you'll want to use when you're filming an interview, because usually when filming one, you want to convey a sense of formality and objectiveness. Finally, we have a high angle. A high angle places the camera above the subject. Placing the camera here does the opposite of a low angle. It makes your subject look small, weak, innocent, and helpless. So again, if that's what you want to convey about a subject, make sure to use this angle. When done correctly, using these angles really goes a long way in helping to convey something to your viewer without having to necessarily say it, which again, helps to strengthen your B-roll. So there you have it, your five tips to make your B-roll stronger. Always shoot in landscape, 
Make sure to employ your rule of thirds, stabilize your video, shoot high and low point of views to take your viewer to places they can't usually go, and use angles to convey meaning. Use these tips and you'll have good B-roll. Or at least you'll be well on your way. So get out there and start shooting. Good luck.